Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. A nation where talks writes election results for professors to announce will always produce governors and presidents with questionable credentials and uncertified certificates. To work in most private sectors in Nigeria, one must not only be below 25 years with three to four years working experience, he or she must also have a second class upper degree, what you call 2-1 in the university. But to become a member of the State House of Assembly, a governor, a member of the Federal House of Representatives, a senator, or even the president of the same country, the only educational qualification you require is school sets or its equivalent. That's section 106, section 177, section 65, and section 131 of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended. If you are still wondering why we have a president, governors, deputy governors, lawmakers, and even party chairmen whose certificate or credentials are questionable, then wait for the meaning of its equivalent. As defined by our laws in section 318, of the 1999 Constitution, its equivalent means anybody who can read and write in the opinion of the National Independent Electoral Commission, INEC. What a country. When the president was asked for a certificate between 2015 and 2019, rather than allow him to either present same or give a reasonable explanation otherwise, willers and hailers were at each other's throat. As the request got lost in the shout of many of their voices, some even asked him to present teacher paper as certificates until the Supreme Court eventually came to his rescue. Same thing happened during Oshomole's tenure as governor when he was asked to produce his certificate. Those asking for a certificate today said then that since he could speak impeccable English, his certificate wasn't necessary. I don't even want to go to Tinubu's Chicago or Salisu Buhari's Toronto. As Dino Melai had to conduct his graduation at the National Assembly with a convocation gown to show that he graduated from ABU Zaria, I would learn it was after seven years for a four-year course. Obasanjo accused Goodluck Jonathan of not completing his PhD. I don't know about that one. No. Ayo Fayoshe, former governor of Ekiti State, claimed to have attended Ibadan Poli, but the institution is still trying to locate his name in their books. Maybe they should ask Gogo. Stella Odua's claim of obtaining a master's degree in St. Paul's College, Lawrenceville, in Virginia, USA, in 1983 is still a subject of controversy. No wonder many of them no longer parade these Oyibo certificates. The certificate of Senator Ademola Adeleke in Oshun governorship election is most laughable. APC and Bayesa deputy governorship candidate is still very fresh in our mind. I wonder if David Lyon and his supporters will ever forgive that guy. How many of us remember Evans or is it Evan Ewerem now? God rest his soul. The list is endless. And now the current governor of Edo State, Godwin Obaseki, or is it Obasek? Just like in 2016, he's also emerged in certificate scandal. And in all the cacophony of voices for and against him, the governor, typically of our politicians, is yet to take out time to explain to Nigerians what led to the discrepancies in the certificate. Rather, he has left the weighty matters to be chasing the shadows of passive enemy. It can only happen in Nigeria. If it is true that this certificate of these politicians are actually fought, then those who imposed him on the state in 2016 should be prosecuted. The question to our politician is, why are there always irreconcilable differences in their certificates? According to the provisions of section 465 of the criminal code, a person who makes a false document or writing, knowing it to be false, and with intent that it may or it may be used or acted upon as genuine, whether in the state or anywhere, is said to have forged the document in writing. But how many of these politicians have we prosecuted? Another jam questions for you. But the most interesting and ironic part of this whole Edo State election saga is that the PDP, who have called Obaseki names and claim he doesn't have a certificate and have consistently scored him low in terms of performance since 2016, are now welcoming him with open arms. 
While on the flip side, the APC that crucified Ize Yamu in 2016 and called him unprintable names, including the one decency wound allow me mention here, are today calling him a political messiah. Ah, Nigerian politicians, even the devil go envy you now. Anyway, the campaigns and debates, if any, will be interesting. My advocacy today would be, until the people realize that development and growth in any society is a product of good followership, who are confident to question their leaders and consistently condemn to order using their thumb and other legal means, Nigeria will continue to have rulers whose integrity and certificate are not only questionable, but irreconcilable, uncertified and certificate. I beg second base, Jerry. <coughs> I've been choking on laughing. I mean, you can laugh. Please laugh freely. Let me, let me quickly throw my own name because I, I know many people will have mm. my, Again, thank you for chronicling it for us. I don't know some of these people because I'm really not interested in a lot of politics because mm -hmm. it just looks like ringa ringa roses. People and you just... want a better society. No, no, interested? no, no. When, 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 the right, when the right people step up to the plate, you will notice how interested I will be. We're not discussing policy. We're not discussing ideology. We're discussing people and lost certificates. But just for the record, on an aside, Obaseki actually came forward. At least I watched where he explained what happened to his certificate. And he spoke good English for the record. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> he explained to us that initially... He didn't have his, because he hasn't used it in a long time. Uh -huh. He didn't, so he had to do an affidavit form of, oh, uh -huh. my certificate exists. Then later he found it. Mm -hmm. Now, those let me, let me quickly, sorry, quickly, so that you don't, you don't run with it. In the affidavit, Obaseki said he left secondary school in 1976 and graduated in 1979. Mm -hmm. And so when the result came and they discovered that he had only three credits. They said, how can you use three credits to gain admission into university? He said he did A-levels. So in between these three years, at what point did you do, do A-level? That is where the problem is. Anyway, my problem is not even that. My problem is that we play politics too much. Like you said, the guy was, has been governor for one term. You didn't have any problem. Now you want him out. You go and find a loophole to get what him out. And that's no, why I lose it. That's why I lose it. That's why I told no, you. No, with the PDP, a PDP brought it up, yes. but the APC had no problem. Well, I like, I like now, the APC you wants to bring legal it. Yeah. Yeah. But let me well, just, finish, let me just drop it very you, quickly. Because of what he just said, okay. does the constitution say that you have to have passed the school certificate or that you have to have a school leaving certificate? Just school, sir, bring it. Just bring but it. But the moment so, you put other certificates alongside that, those mm -hmm. other certificates become questionable. Ah, okay. Okay. Let me just wow. quickly land this the I'll land the point because actually I want, mm -hmm. I want to hear what you all have to say. But bottom line is I'm saying my problem with it when we start looking at the solution is to say, you're talking about the fact that our leaders are not educated. Most of Nigeria is not educated. And that's why most of Nigeria, when you're talking about getting the leadership in with thumb and legal means, we don't even recognize what a good leader is, much less to push for it. That's why so I'm saying that the first person, the first base for me in terms of transformation has to be uh, let's look at what leaders are offering themselves and what their uh, mandate is. Is anybody prioritizing investment in education? If they are, they are a man, because that's where we need to start. We need to make sure that as many people as possible are exposed to the right quality of education and right thinking so that yeah. they're not going to pull the wool over our eyes. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Some, from Obasaki's camp, we'll tell you he's, um, he's, uh, he's prioritizing education, but let's hear what um, others have to say. Yes, I, I, want to add, I want to jump in quickly to say that I, I think we're flogging this issue of certificates and paper education uh, to trump that empathy and your people skill. For you to be a leader, these are very important uh, attributes. I now go back to people like uh, someone like uh, Ronald Reagan, that was president of the United States. He didn't have any degree. And yet he elevated that country to a point that other, other, other presidents are doing catch up today. We, we look locally here at Eliganza. He didn't have an education and that yet he built an empire. Should give us you empire. Yeah, so if, if you have somebody who is passionate about people, you understand, you surround yourself with intelligent people, all the professors that will do the work. But once you know where you want to carry the country to, you want to lead the country to, you use you you create that environment and have that people touch. I think we're just going on and on about Say, this. Let me ask you a quick question. Who we've had professors who have failed. We have educated people who have failed. I want to quickly. We need somebody who has empathy. Who and, and in any case, asking, this asking, thing we call like, education exactly. is relative. It, it's relative. We've had people that will go to meetings and they speak their language. They, they, they communicate in a language that nobody understands. You understand? Education here is relative. You know, then, what so you why did you go to school? <laughs> sorry, Nafisa, you have to come in because... Uh, the yes, sorry. Is yes, okay. So I'm going to come in and say that I guess why we have a uh, particular emphasis on um, the certificates is because that certificate is the only, um, how do I put it, proof that 
you have some measure of critical thinking. That is the only, that is our standard in Nigeria for measuring critical thinking. But my question is, okay, so we have these unqualified, inadequate people. How did we come about a system that constantly throws at us incompetent, inadequate people? Why do we constantly go through the wrongs over and over and over? I think Libras refer to Whenever they want to dismantle any Libras, politician, Libras they don't have, say that the certificate is not, the certificate is not original. That you to the problem is, I, I gave you an instance. I said, you want... Say do that he says certificate is not necessary for governance or for leadership. How do you measure? No. If he wants to employ now, if he wants to employ, too much, too much if Seydu wants to employ it, it in his company, be the poor. it shouldn't be the poor. If Seydu wants to employ in his company now, he will look for the right people with the right mindset, with the right qualification. No, but it is I only think, no, here. I think the corporate Wait, let me, world let me, is let me, evolving, let me, and me, they are beginning to stay away from saying Do you know what they do? No, do you know what they do? They will train you. They will retrain you. They will retrain you. But here, there is no training for leadership. It's only in Nigeria where you want to be a leader, you don't need any training. For, for me, and no, you don't need critical thinking. Wait, wait, and then we this, say, yeah, that was why we told Buhari, this. bring tissue paper. And we are in, in <laughs> toilets today. Time, time, time is up. Leave us. Okay, Take you it know, away. Um, Nafisa said something about it being a way to measure our critical thinking. But I just want to take that away and look at our politicians and how they politic in this country and say that they are actually an embarrassment. Because, because if we are talking about a man who you have certified to be governor in 2016 and you're suddenly coming to tell us now that because that of that... That is why they should be prosecuted. Th th this conversation is just I'm, really irritating and annoying. That's why they should be prosecuted. So all we're saying is if the leadership don't measure up to their job, then it's our job to hold them to a standard. Keep the conversation going on on our social media platform, on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG, and on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG. And to catch up with previous broadcasts, just simply go to plustvafrica.com forward slash the Advocate NG. There are so many of them there. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Till next week, when we'll be joining our voices to yours in keeping the system honest and accountable and asking for certificates, let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye for now. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking, it's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What well, I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.